The impound lot. Your words ring metallically off the confinement room's walls. You've been taking, you've been talking for so long, recounting all the tedious details of your run, that your voice hums within your ears after you finish speaking. The single flickering bulb above your head sways in some invisible breeze, maybe from all the hot air you've been blowing out of your lungs these past several minutes, maybe from the occasional shaking just outside the room. Beyond the light's reach, your interrogator stands shrouded in shadow. You can't see his eyes, but you can feel them quietly observing you from the safety of his corner. His silence opens the floodgate to your thoughts, and questions come pouring in. Were you brought here alone? With others? Are these really cops, or is this some kind of twisted mindfuckery? But, most of all, what do these people want? You finish your story, there's nothing left to tell. It's his turn to talk. But will he? <laughs> The troll lifts his audio recorder from the table and clicks it off. He stands in silence for a moment, looming over you, sizing you up. Then he purses his lips and nods. And that's where we picked you up. I told you your damn story. Now take me to the rest of my team. Don't worry about your friends. They're safe and sound in the pen. You'll be seeing them soon enough. Soon enough? Screw that. I gave you what you asked for. Take me to them now. Not just yet. There's something else that you should have a look at first. Your testimony was helpful. It's only fair that you learn something in return. Spit it out, then. Don't leave me in suspense. The troll pull, uh, pulls an, uh, an object out of his police evidence bag marked with the HKPF logo. A PDF with a cracked case, stippled with the day-old blood. We recovered this at the scene. Take a look, and see what that what we saved you and your team from. Tell me, are you with the HKPF or did you break into one of their evidence lockers? Good guess. We'll talk about that later. He sets the PDA down on the desk, activates it with the tip of his pen, and slides it towards you. But for now, keep your eyes on the screen. Oh, and don't touch that PDA. You don't want to get your fingerprints on it. Watch the video feed. The feed is shaky. Whoever owned this device must have been panicked out of breath. You can see people, swarms of people, including the locals that you spoke to on the street. All are carrying burdens of some kind or, or another. A laptop here, a knapsack there, backpacks bulging with shri shrink-wrapped food and bottled water. None of them appear to be armed. The camera wheels around and you can see a firing line of police. The man with the patchy beard is pleading with them, begging to l be let through. He says that that he isn't a rioter, that none of the people here are. The constable, faceless behind his mask, says nothing. The camera focuses on a figure behind police lines. Her features are instantly familiar. Chief Inspector Crate. She looks straight into the camera, then she reaches her hand to an ear and speaks into her comm link. Her voice is loud and clear enough that you can hear it over the PDA's tinny speakers. All teams, you know your orders. Open fire. Put them down. An explosion of gunfire fills your ears. The camera spins crazily, and you catch a panoramic view of bodies bursting like water balloons. Faces that you recognize from your trip to combat pings scream for help and are silenced. The second volley of gunfire catches the owner of the PDA. You hear him shriek, watch the camera spin dizzyingly. You hear a sickeningly cr sickening crack, and the video feed flickers and dies. The PDA goes silent. Without a word, your interrogator lifts it from the table and, re and returns it to its evidence bag. Never thought I'd be happy to get drugged and kidnapped. You should be. If we hadn't brought you in, you'd have been gunned down with the rest of the poor bastards you saw in the video feed. No questions, no arrests, just a hail of bullets that would have converted you and your team from Shadowrunners into statistics. Yeah. I'm getting that. Officially, the Special Duties Unit suppressed the riot, just like they were supposed to. That's the story that all the news outlets are running with. He shuffles his papers. Unofficially? Well, you be the judge. Why'd you show me this? Good question. Let's just say that people at the top 
have had their eyes on you for a while now. You'll get all the answers you need soon enough. The troll stretches, slips his pen back into his breast pocket, and flips his notepad shut. Then he taps a series of keystrokes into his PDA, and the cuffs around your wrist go slack. The, light, the lights in the room come up, and for the first time, you can see his face, and the badge on his hip. HKPF, standard issue. A laminated card clipped to his breast pocket states his name. Inspector David Yang. Okay, I think we're done here. What are you charging me with, Inspector? Nothing. You are under arrest. You and your team are here as guests of the HKPF. And you're going to remain that way until we tell you differently. Guests of the HKPF, you're going to have to clarify that. Not my job. You'll need to speak with Q and Lam for that. Don't you worry, they'll be sending you so uh, sending for you soon enough. Q and Lam? Who are they? You'll find out. This guy's infuriating to talk to, because he keeps doing that. <laughs> you know the one. There's a little arrow over there. Are you guys ready to level up or something? I think I already leveled all of you up, right? Yeah. This is just here for fun, I guess? Or maybe it lets me respec? Nope. No sixth point. Everyone's good to go. Oh well. I guess it actually, I think it's a, I think that's supposed to be filled in when it's actually active, my bad. Got distracted. I haven't leveled up or anything, have I? Still the same five points to spend. Did it, wait, did I even lose money? I can't remember if I was at 8,000 or 8,500 before. I probably did spend the five, okay. Steel door. The door looks solid. You can't see any visible doorknob or latching mechanism from where you're standing. Most likely it's barred from the other side. Examine it more slowly, more closely. The door is made of heavy steel. It appears to be mounted to a set of tracks at the top and bottom of the door frame, designed to slide rather than to swing open. When closed, it sits flush with the wall. Your best guess is that the room you're built you're in was built in one piece, and that the door was later cut from it. That's a surprising amount of analysis for this particular protagonist to ever apply. Uh, attempt to force the door. You slam your shoulder into the door, it rings like a gong, but doesn't budge. Put some muscle into it. You rear, you rear back, take a deep breath, and, and throw your shoulder check. Throw another shoulder check. You know, when I was saying force the door, I was thinking more like try to push it open the way that we just observed that it opens, not just shove it. <laughs> because we've already observed that that's not how it works. The clanging noise that reverberates inside the room is impressive, but the door doesn't budge. You do it again a third time. Nothing. Eventually, you hear the sound of muffled voices on the other side of the container door, followed by a dull thunk. The scrape of metal dragged over metal fills your ears. The door pops open, but only a crack. A sliver of daylight streams through the other side. Are they gonna incapacitate me? Oh wait, did I just do that? Did I just make it move a little bit? <laughs> oh, no, it's just opening. I figured my character would get impatient and try to beat on it or something. The, stun, the sun stabs your eyes as you step from the interrogation room into the noonday sun. Blinking against the glare, the world gradually swims into focus. A familiar gray face greets you. All right, why are Ractor and Gaichu here is what I'm wondering. Grotto, you're out. Thank God. They've had you locked away in, in there since we got here. He leans in to peer to the trailer. Looks empty? The way you were pounding on the door, I assumed somebody was beating you in there. They got you too. Great. There goes my chance at a rescue. Yeah, sorry to have inconvenienced you. <laughs> inconvenienced you. He begins to pace, stalking up, uh, up and down the length of the fence that encloses you. I don't get this. What are our captors playing at? And why didn't they interrogate us too? It doesn't make any sense for them to question you for hours while we're all sitting out here. None of this makes sense, my friend. He produces a cigarette from, from his breast pocket and dangles it from his lip. Our captors are dressed like police constables, but this isn't central book booking. It's a damned impound lot. And gassing you as they did is an unorthodox tactic to say the least. Well, what do you know? The gang's all here. Sadly, yes. We all share the same predicament, regardless of our participation in Kindly Cheng's errand. It's a long story. You know what else doesn't make sense? 
The cops coming after us at all. I mean, the APB was lifted, right? That's what Ani Cheng said when we got out of the walled city. It was lifted. The APB that jo Josephine Tseng had Crate put out for us came with a kill or capture order attached to it, and they weren't paying much attention to the capture part. If the APB hadn't been lifted, we wouldn't be having this conversation. We'd all be dead, just like Nightjar and Carter. Duncan's back stiffens, but he holds his tongue. Why do I get the feeling they're just not going to explain why Gaichu and Ractor here and just say a long story and move on? Just, just, eh, eh, just, just cross over the part. We should be dead now, or in a secure facility somewhere. Instead, we're just sitting in an, um, in an impound lot. It's, and not just us either. She gestures into the distance. At the edge of the impound yard, tethered to the docks, the rusted hulk of the bolt hole rises above its surroundings. Heavy chains snake up from the secure moorings in the docks to heavy maglocks that clamp down on the vessel's hull. She isn't going anywhere. They didn't just arrest us, they arrested our damn boat. Okay, that makes a little more sense as to how those two are here than if they literally stole our boat. How'd they do that? And those of us on board were taken along for the ride. He let out an, irrit an irritated grunt. No warning was given. They simply hooked us to a tug cut away our moorings, and hauled us away through the, from the harbor. Can you shed any more light on this at all, Seattle? I mean, did whoever you talked to in there let anything else slip? The interrogator said that they were... that we are here as guests of the HKPF, whatever that means. Guess, huh? Yeah, sure. But when I was with Lone Star... People would disappear sometimes, get dragged off into black sites, thrown in cages like these. They didn't always come back out of them. How reassuring. Gaichu suddenly leans towards the cell door, his head cocked. An eyebrow raises. He, ra he raises a gnarled hand, gesturing for the team to halt. Do you hear that? Footsteps. Someone is coming. He lowers himself into a ready stance. Prepare yourselves. We are about to have company. Hey, company. A uniformed constable wearing a sergeant's insignia passes through a set of double gates and into your holding pen. She walks with an air of quiet authority, her face an expressionless mask. A pair of wary eyes fix themselves to you. Handyman? Her voice is crisp and cold. Step forward, please. Why? What is this about? If you come along quietly and do as you're told, all of your questions will be answered. Now step forward, please. Senior Inspectors Lamb and Q want a word with you. I'd like a word with them, too. She nods, raises her PDA, and begins to type in a series of commands. That's the right attitude. Very good. In a moment, I'm going to let you out of this cage. When I do that, I want you to make your way to the command trailer near the edge of the docks. Don't try anything stupid. You're being watched. I've served, t I've served time in a corporate prison. I know what not to do. I hope so, for your sake. She punches the final button into the PDA, and massive gates in the pen that hold you begin to rumble open. Go on, start walking. You don't want to leave the senior inspectors waiting. Nothing trustworthy about any of this. Is there a sparking control panel in our, in our pen? With open circuits? Weird. Anyway... They're just going to keep all of my other people around here. Is it that one? Command trailer. Oh, that's that's straightforward enough. So you could just wander around if you wanted to, except you'd probably get shot. Let's not push that boundary right now. The cramped confines of the command trailer are packed to the gills with security-rated technology. Terminals and surveillance packages, all stamped with the Mitsuhama logo, fill every inch of available space. <coughs> Sorry. Just ahead of you, a pair of senior inspectors, one male and one female, stand over a command console. The man offers you a friendly smile. Ah, Mr. Finch, you're here. Very good. I am Senior Inspector Andy Lamb, one of the leaders of this task force. Thank you for coming so promptly. He extends a hand for you to shake. I think I know what's going on here. I think this is all going to turn out to be an under, sort of like an undercover task force within the police force that's basically... Uh, trying to secretly deal with the, the way that everything's corrupted by the corporations. 
So we're gonna try to bring, we're probably gonna try to bring down Josephine Sang's entire corporation over the course of this campaign, I was what I would assume. You say that as if I had a choice. Refuse the handshake. The woman, an elf, replies through a mouth that seems drawn into a permanent scowl. Seems you've got a firm grasp on the situation. That's good. It'll save us some time. Now, I've got a real bastard of a migraine, so let's try to make this quick. Yes, of course. He offers you a slight bow. My apologies, Senior Inspector Key. Or Q. I'm gonna be... Let's, say, let's, commit, let's just commit to calling it Q. Uh... And as for you, handyman, you must be wondering what you and your team are doing here. I get the feeling you're gonna tell me. Q cuts in, rubbing the bridge of her nose between her thumb and forefinger. She just looks like Trinity, basically, right? <laughs> Maybe not, I don't know. Long story short, we've got a problem, and you're in a unique position to help us solve it. This is a job offer, handyman. We want to hire you. Unique position, huh? You want to tell me what you mean by that? We need you to gather information on someone that you have history with. Someone that we suspect of criminal wrongdoing, but can't move on, can't move on without proof. Pull up the file, Lamb. Lamb nods and his fingers dance over the keypad of his PDA's keypad. His fingers dance over the keypad of his PDA's keypad. Alright, just had to make sure that I didn't just completely flub that. Now that's the real sentence. He raises the device to show you what he's pulled up on the display. From the device's tiny screen, a familiar face leers back at you. Lamb holds it to your face for a few seconds, then pulls the device away. You have a history with this woman. He phrases it as a statement, not a question. I know her. She was in charge of the police ambush that nearly killed me when I first got here. That's right. And that ambush did kill some friends of yours. A lone star officer named Carter, and a shadow runner who called himself Nightjar, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Her people gunned them down in the middle of a friendly chat. Crate's people are nothing if not efficient, and the chief inspector's uh, chief inspector herself is a highly decorated officer, a leader of the HKPF's elite special duties unit. Within the police force, she's universally respected and feared. She's also the unofficial face of the special duties unit in the Hong Kong media circuit. When they need a talking head for a news broadcast, she's the woman they go to. To her few fellow to her fellow inspectors, Crate is a hero and a role model. They'd go to bat for, for her without a se uh, second's hesitation. The woman has a lot of pull. She's a big deal. I get it. Move on. Key members of the Executive Council believe Crate is at the center of a conspiracy within the HKPF. That she and her co-conspirators have been working as mercenaries under our noses, taking on illicit side work for profit and tarnishing the HKPF's good name in the process. This task force was assembled to investigate that suspicion. You believe she's gone bad. Gee, what was the first clue? Her association with Josephine Tseng. Funny enough, including the APB that Sang had put on, out on you. You may be aware that your name was cleared, by the way. That APB was lifted and your file, your file scrubbed clean. Lamb and I were the ones who made that happen. Well, that solves that mystery. Now, we understand that the prospect of working with the police task force could feel foreign to you. And I fully expect that you have questions that you'd like to ask. Lamb spreads his hands. If there's anything pressing that you'd like to know, I'll do my best to answer. Here's one. Why me? There's plenty of other runners in Hong Kong. Other runners don't have a built-in reason to want Crate dead. You do. Beyond that, you're the perfect deniable asset for the job. If you get ki caught or killed, the SDU will assume that you were there to get revenge for what they did to you. So if I get caught doing this job for you, you're gonna leave me to twist. How is that any different from any other job you've worked? Besides, what we've pulled from you in your interrogation has convinced us that we can trust you for this. That's invaluable to people in your position. How the hell did you get my boat here without Kylie Cheng stopping you? What makes you think she could stop us? The Yellow Lotus is powerful, but we have a navy at our disposal. 
Navy. What'd you do, attack Haley? Of course not. We made a token show of force, and that was that. Kindly Chang doesn't want the mar Marine police t uh, parking a Sea Panther off the Haley docks any more than anyone would. As highly as she might think of you, she wasn't about to risk a uh, shooting war to keep us from towing your barge. Tell me where this impound lot is located. I want to know how far you've, how far from home you've taken me. We're near the Aberdeen. Uh, we're nearer to Aberdeen than we are to Haley. That's about all you need to know. Secrecy is one of the most important tools for survival, handyman. We can't give you an exact address. I want to know who I'll be working with if I do this. What are your roles in this organization? I handle the technical side of the investigation. Decking, information monitoring and control, surveillance work, that sort of thing. Kia's is on loan from Mitsuhama Corporate. She's a cop, just like I am, but her primary responsibility is safeguarding the company's image and financial interests. Mitsuhama. What does a Japan Corp care about some dirty cops in Hong Kong? The Hong Kong police force is owned and operated by Hitsuma uh, Mitsuhama. The company is obviously concerned by what's happening here, so they dispatched me to help Lam lead this investigation. Consider me a corporate liaison here to bridge the gap between the suits and the uniforms. Sounds thrilling. She shrugs. It pays better than walking a beat. I'd like to go back to Haley. You gonna let me do that? If you choose to work with us, certainly. When the job is done. If you're free on the other hand, well, that's a more complicated discussion. I thought you said I wasn't a prisoner here. Oh, you're not, but the thing is, you know about this task force now, that's a security risk. If you refuse to help us, we're gonna have to ha we're gonna have to hold you here for your own safety. You can go back to Haley when the job's done and create her people are behind bars. However long that takes. She nods. That's right, however long it takes. Or you could just help us and be home in a day or two. Your call. I'm done asking questions, so what's next? What's next is that we let you go, for now. Take some time, think it over, and come back when you're ready to seal the deal. After you've accepted, we'll go into the details of the run. I'm not accepting anything from you without running it by my team first. That's why we're letting you go. Talk to them, and tell them exactly what we've told you. We're confident they'll want to work with us. They should be heading to the bolt hole as we speak. She pauses. Fun name, by the way. When you've made your decision, come back to us. No rush, no pressure. We're not trying to coerce you into doing this. We're on the same team, after all. I'll talk to my people. No promises. And back out we go. Fun name, by the way. Are they talking about the nickname I gave myself? Which, of course, they have no idea. They have no idea, of course, what I actually wrote. But they're having fun there. So they're gone, so they went to the bolt hole. That must be up here. Yep. Oh yeah. Right, the bolt hole's the name of my ship, isn't it? It's It really has been a long time. A few months at least, since I originally finished the game. As you pass through the hatch and step into the familiar confines of your bolt hole, of the bolt hole, you find your team awaiting for you. Well, this is a hell of a thing. Goblet absentmindedly passes a rat from one hand to another. The rodent squeals and chirps in delight. You said a gun show? Not our best day ever as a team. So what's the deal, handyman? Who captured us? Are they cops? Corporate security? A conspiracy of some kind, maybe? Funnily enough, I think this whole thing's gonna work out to our advantage. Oh. In what way? Remember that ambush that killed Carter, got shot in Nightjar? They want us to take out the people behind it. Well, that is interesting. A smile begins to spread across his face. If that's what they want, then you won't hear any arguments from me. Or me. Much as I hate getting jerked around like this, the prospect of getting back some, some uh, payback for Nightjar is really enticing. So what did you tell him? I told them I wouldn't agree to anything until I ran it by you. Huh. Well, I guess it's nice to know you're thinking. Nice to know you're thinking of us. So, uh, what's our next step? We call up our fixer and tell that tell her that we're bringing her a job for once. 
Okay, just, uh, don't be too flippant about it, okay? I mean, she's gonna know that the cops have seized the boat hole. She probably watched them tow the, bo the boat away. She'd already, she, she's already gonna be wondering why that happened, maybe jumping to conclusions. We don't want her to come to the wrong ones. Contact Kindly Cheng on your PDA. No time like the present. You tap Kindly Cheng's personal comm link number into your PDA and hit the send button. A moment later, an old woman's face appears on the screen. Scream? Screen. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Andy, man. A pleasure to see you, dear. I've been worried sick. She swills something the, the, the color of rotten plums out of the highball glass. Now, would you kindly tell me where the fuck you've been? Indisposed. I was trapped in a long, awkward conversation with a police interrogator. Ah, I see. Her voice sounds cold. You're calling me from police custody. They haven't learned anything that they didn't already know. In fact, they told me to call you. There's a long pause, then finally... Tell me exactly what they said to you. Don't leave anything out. The cops who have me want me to take down Crate. You know, the cop who kept popping us on the news. Copping, popping up on the news, damn it. <laughs> Her eyes flash dangerously. I know who she is. Keep talking. The leaders of the group call are called Key and Lam. Or Q and Lam. I need to commit to that, damn it. <laughs> Auntie Cheng. That's what the DCI are holding at the holding pen said. The senior inspectors. Those won't be their real names, dear. Not if they're letting you contact me like this. It doesn't matter what their names are. They want to take on the SDU and they want my help doing it. Huh. She lifts the glass to her lips and takes another slurp of the dirty, viscous li li liquid. They're after the filth who ambushed you then. The ones that killed Nightjar. And Carter. Nobody gives a fuck about Carter. You should know better than to interrupt me by now, gun show. She dismisses the outburst with a wave of her hand. Now be a good boy and keep your mouth shut. Duncan clenches his jaw. He's clearly furious, but he says nothing. All right. I want you to go along with it. Tell them that you'll take the job. With my blessings. I suppose that follows. You did love Nightjar. This isn't... That, that isn't what this is about. She looks into her glass, swirling the liquid inside with a flick of her wrist. Not entirely. I've always wanted to get a runner into one of the HKPF's secure facilities. But it was never in the cards. Now, here comes this task force inviting you in. If you can avenge my sweet Nightjar's death in the process, well, that so much the better. So you want me to spy on the cops? Makes sense, I suppose. Just be smart. Do nothing that could endanger the Yellow Lotus or myself, and report back to me if you see anything you could constitute a threat. After all, I mean, above all, keep your eyes open, and don't trust this task force of yours. Whatever you do. I've o I always keep my eyes open on Yi Cheng. That's why I'm still alive. Good boy. Oh, and Handyman? I'm sure the police confiscated the Kong that you procured from Eddie T T uh, Tang. The one I paid you to retrieve for me. Get it back. She thumbs a button on her PDA and the screen goes black. Great. Not only am I working with the police, but I basically owe her at this point. Well, guess that's it. She lifts her shoulders in a half shrug. We're doing this. Kindly's right. This is an opportunity for us to kill two birds with one stone. We'll take down the cops that hunted us and collect intel on the HKPF. Then there is no more to be said. He turns away, his armor rustling as his armor, as his body shifts. You go back to Lamb and Q to accept the job. I will ready my gear. Alrighty. Well, a deal's a deal, right? Ooh. 
mission computer. I may have to visit that at some point. Maybe, maybe next to see if anything new popped up. Gonna go ahead and cut it here though, guys. So thanks for watching like always. The plot is certainly thickening, and I think we're just finished our introduction, and now we're actually gonna start the big mission that this whole, this whole uh, bonus campaign is about. Thanks for watching like always, guys, and I'll see you next time.